Why have you come at this hour, Crito? It must be quite early. Yes, certainly. I wonder the keeper of the prison would let you in. He knows me because I often come Socrates. And I have done him a kindness. You have not told me why you come at this early hour. I come to bring you a message which is sad and painful for us. What is it, Crito? Has the ship arrived from Delos, upon whose arrival I am to die? No, the ship has not actually arrived, but ship will probably be here today. Therefore tomorrow will be the last day of your life, Socrates. I will tell you. I am to die on the day after the arrival of the ship. But I do not think that the ship will be here until tomorrow. Oh! My beloved Socrates, let me entreat you once more to take my advice and escape. For if you die I shall not only lose a friend who can never be replaced, but there is another evil. People who do not know you and me will believe that I might have saved you if I had been willing to give money, but that I did not care. Now, can there be a worse disgrace than this that I should be thought to value money more than the life of a friend? For the many will not be persuaded that I wanted you to escape, and that you refused. But why, my dear Crito, should we care about the opinion of the many? Gmen and they are the only persons who are worth considering. Don't know about the people those who died for establishing the truth. Look at Mr. Galileo and Mr. Martin Luther King. Galileo's theory which is the earth is moving around the sun. But at that time no one accepted his theory. And he was arrested for his concept. But do you see, Socrates, that the opinion of the many must be regarded, as is evident in your own case because they can do the very greatest evil to anyone who has lost their good opinion? Credo in the matter of just and unjust, fair and foul, good and evil, which are the subjects of our present consultation, ought we to follow the opinion of the many and to fear them? Or the opinion of the one man who is understanding, and whom we ought to fear and reverence more than all the rest of the world, and whom deserting we shall destroy and injure that principle in us which may be assumed to be improved by justice and deteriorated by injustice. On the other hand Galileo's concept was proved correct. And now everyone follow his theory and because of him people are able to go to moon even. Moreover Crito, do you remember what happened to Martin Luther King? He also fought for equal rights for people. And now everyone is enjoying the benefit of equal right. I agree with you Socrates that they did many things for people but unfortunately they could not enjoy the benefit that they were fought for. My dear Credo they did not fought for themselves. If you notice at Mr. King he said he knew that any time he could be killed for what he's doing but still he did not lose his hope. Before went to prison Mr. Galileo was asked to withdraw his theory. If he do that then he do not have to go to the prison but Galileo did not. He sacrificed his life for the good things. Don't you think, Mr. King and Mr. Galileo did the right thing? Yes Socrates they did. And will life be worth having, if that higher part of man be depraved, which is improved by justice and deteriorated by injustice? Certainly not. Then, my friend, we must not regard what the many say of us, but what he, the one man who is understanding of just and unjust, will say, and what the truth will say. And therefore you begin an error when you suggest he had we should regard the opinion of the many about just and unjust, good and evil, honorable and dishonorable. Well, someone will say, but the many can kill us. Yes, Socrates. That will clearly be the answer. Let me tell you one thing Crito, I am not only now but always have been such a one who obeys the logic. I believe everything happened for a reason. I am here as must be for a reason. If I escape from here that means I am betrayed with myself. I have nothing to say, Socrates. Then let me follow the intimations of the will of God.